Hello, my name is Jake Bloom. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect on the Shared Security and Network Services team. Today, we're going to be talking about the Kali Linux and Metasploitable 3 deployment within OCI. The outline for today's video is going to include Kali Linux deployment, as well as the Metasploitable 3 image within OCI. Overall, there's going to be four pieces to this deployment. There's going to be creating a VCN with the VCN wizard. After the VCN is created, we are going to deploy the Kali Linux image into the public subnet and enable RDP. Afterwards, we will deploy the Metasploitable 3 via the custom image import process within the private subnet. And finally, we will run through an example attack scenario with Kali Linux and Metasploitable 3. Let's go ahead and get started. We will start by creating a compartment to put all of our resources into. Let's go ahead and click on Create Compartment. After we've typed in the name for the compartment, we will add a description and then create the compartment. Now that the compartment is created, we're going to go ahead and use that compartment to deploy our resources. So we'll go to the networking tab and then we'll go to virtual cloud networks. Let's go ahead and change the compartment to the new compartment that we just created. Afterwards, we'll start the VCN wizard. We will deploy this resource to house both our Kali Linux and Metasploitable 3 instance, and then we will also be able to connect to the internet and do some other things here. So we'll click on start, and then we will give our VCN a name. I'm giving my VCN name Kali Meta VCN. The IP blocks for the CIDR block, the public and private subnet look good, so we're going to go ahead and move past that. We'll click on next. We went with the defaults here, so it's pretty safe to just create. So after about 20 seconds, we'll go ahead and uh, start using this resource after all these checkboxes say done. Now that the BCN has been created, we're going to go ahead and modify the security list, the default security list for this VCN so that we can allow traffic for the deployment that we're going to be doing. So we're going to start with 0000 slash 0, which is all of the resources on TCP for 3390 so that we can do RDP to our Kali Linux machine. Now that the first security list has been modified, we will down level by one within the console, and then we will go ahead and modify the second security list for the private subnet where Metasploitable 3 will be housed. So we will go ahead and add an ingress rule for 000, and this time we will actually use any of the services uh, under the IP protocol. And then we'll go ahead and add the ingress rule. Now that the networking prerequisites have been made for the instances, let's go ahead and build our first instance, which is the Kali Linux instance. So we're gonna go ahead and create an instance within the con console under our Kali Meta compartment. Go ahead and name this. Kali Linux, and we're going to keep this in the same availability domain uh, for AD1. Afterwards, we're going to change the image. We're going to go to Oracle Images, and then we will go and pull up the Kali Linux image and select the image. Now that this is pulled up, we're going to update the shape uh, just to add a little bit more brute to the machine. Go ahead and scroll down and make sure that all the networking parameters are correct. So I see that I'm in the virtual cloud network. The subnet is the public subnet that was created. And then I want to assign a public IP address. This all looks correct. Since we're doing RDP for this instance, we're going to go ahead and click on no SSH keys. Afterwards, we will specify a custom boot volume size of 200 gigabytes. And then we will go ahead and create the instance. This shouldn't take too long, uh, about just a few minutes. And now we see that the instance is in a running state. So we'll go ahead and create a console connection. And the username and password here is Debian Debian. Now we'll go ahead and reset the password with PAS S W D Debian. Go ahead and input the current password and new password. Retype the password and now the password has been updated. Next, we'll go ahead and run the script to build out the RDP. 
instance uh, that's available here or in the blog post. We'll go ahead and paste this script and then we'll let it run. You may have to uh, press enter a few times, but uh, overall it will end up completing. This is what it's gonna look like at the end of the script. So I can see that configuring XRDP to listen on port 3390. Let's go ahead and make sure that the XRDP instance is actually running. So we'll do systemctl status XRDP and it's inactive. Go ahead and reboot the machine. Let's. I always like to do this just to make sure that the changes are persistent. It only takes a minute to reboot, so let's go ahead and do that. While we're waiting for the image to reboot, let's go ahead and download our Metasploitable 3 pre-built image from this website. Go ahead and copy that link and then go to the URL. Once we're here, we'll go ahead and download the Ubuntu 14.04 image. I'm going to click on the virtual block box image and click download. Once the download is complete, we'll go ahead and untar the file. Since I'm using Mac OS, I'm going to go ahead and go into my terminal. I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and then I'm going to go find the download that I just had. It starts with 383, so I just did a ls for 383. And now I'm going to uh, tar xbf this file, and it's going to uh, decompress the, the file. And I'm looking for this VMDK, this last image right here. And I'm going to use this VMDK as a custom image for OCI. So let's go ahead and go into back into the OCI console and we're going to upload our image. And we will do that by going to the storage and then file storage and archive storage. We'll be using an object store here. So we'll create a bucket uh, in our Kali, Kali Meta compartment. Bucket's gonna be named Metasploitable3. Now that the bucket has been created, we're gonna go ahead and click on the bucket and then upload our VMDK. So I'm gonna select my file in my download folder, which is the VMDK that we're interested in uploading. I'm gonna click on upload. As soon as it's done uploading, it's gonna say finished. We'll go ahead and close this menu. Now what we'll do is we will create a custom image with the VMDK that we just built. So we'll go to import image. I'm gonna go ahead and give this image a readable name. And then I'm going to go to the bucket and click on the VMDK object within the bucket. I'm gonna go on emulated mode here as well. Uh, it's not as quite high in performance, but it's gonna give a better opportunity for this very old Ubuntu 14.04 image to boot properly. And now we will import the image. It took about 10 minutes for this process to complete. It doesn't take very long, but at the end you will see succeeded. Now we're gonna to go to uh, compute instances, and we're actually going to build out our Metasploitable 3 instance. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to name it Metasploitable 3. We can go ahead and go in the same availability domain. We're going to go to custom images. The new Metasploitable 3 image is now available, so we'll select that. The shape is fine here, one core and eight gigs of memory, so we'll move past that. We're in the correct VCN. I need to change to a private subnet to make sure that this is not publicly accessible. And then for SSH keys, I don't need an SSH key here either. So I'm going to say no SSH keys and I'm gonna click create. Now that we have both the Kali Linux and Metasploitable 3 instances configured, we're gonna go ahead and RDP into the Kali Linux machine using the public IP address that's shown here. I'm going to go ahead and use my RDP client on my Mac OS using the public IP address plus uh, a colon 3390 to indicate the proper port. Then we'll click on connect and then I will be RDP'd into the Kali Linux machine. Now that I've confirmed that RDP is working properly, I'm gonna go ahead and collect the private IP address of Metasploitable 3 so that I can start doing attacks on my Metasploitable instance. 
I'm going to do a test using the web browser. I'm going to go ahead and use the private IP address because I know that I will get a return for, you can see, Drupal, chat, payroll, PHP, etc. Now that we've confirmed connectivity with the Metasploitable 3 instance, we're going to go ahead and look up some example vulnerabilities on the image. So we're going to look up Metasploitable 3 vulnerabilities for Ubuntu. I'm going to use the first link here as a guide to guide me through the exploit process. So once this loads, I'm going to do a control F and I'm going to look for a Drupal vulnerability since I know that Drupal is a part of this image. I'm going to go ahead and go to this part of the PDF. And now I can see the exploit ex execution details in order to use this vulnerability within my lab. So we'll see here that uh, it's going to use the MSF console, which is the Metasploitable framework. This is uh, a built-in tool set for Kali Linux that gives us the ability to run this execution code. So we're going to be using the exploit uh, multi-HTTP uh, Drupal. So let's go ahead and use this code and launch the example here. So I'm going to launch Metasploitable Framework Console within Kali Linux. This will take just a second to start, and then we will be able to execute on our exploit. Now that the Metasploitable Framework Console has been instantiated, we're going to go ahead and use the exploit that is indicated within this uh, here. I'm just going to do a quick copy paste. Now I'm going to show options to see what options need to be configured for the exploit. So I see our host, which is my Metasploitable 3 instance. I need the IP address of this, so I'm going to go ahead and set my our host to this IP. Uh, I have the target URI, which needs to be changed. The local host might look right. Okay, it does look good. I, I ran IPA and it looks good. Let's go ahead and set the our host value to my Metasploitable 3 instance. Now we need to make sure that all the other properties are set properly. So I need to set localhost, that looks good. I need to set the target URI to forward slash Drupal forward slash. So let's go ahead and set that target URI. Now I need to set the payload to PHP reverse shell, uh, reverse PHP. And currently it is Let's see, it's actually not, it's for reverse TCP, so I need to set that properly. So let's go ahead and reverse that, or set that payload to reverse Perl. Press enter. I'm gonna clear the screen with control L. I'm gonna show options one more time just to make sure everything looks good. And now let's go ahead and run the exploit. So I'm gonna run exploit, and I should see something soon. So I waited a minute or two and the reverse shell never ended up kicking off. So uh, I forgot something in the existing configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. I needed to add an any any rule uh, to my security list so that I could actually do the reverse shell on port 4444. My security list was blocking it. So now that that's available, uh, I can see that I have a command shell that's opened. That's great. That means that I have a reverse shell and I can actually start running some commands. So if I run directory, I'm looking at the remote instance here. I can run IPA and I can see the remote IP address. Uh, I can do all kinds of stuff. I'm in that machine. So I've confirmed that I've been able to execute commands on a remote host only using the vulnerability. This concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching how to start vulnerability testing with Kali Linux and Metasploitable 3. We will use this deployment as a foundation in the future to learn how to defend against these attacks. See you in the next video.